Hello everyone, this is Crota coming at you, giving you game one in another King of the Hill style series, as it is going to be between a Night Elf and an Orc. We see the Night Elf player here, Lin Ju Jae, spawning as the Red Night Elf all over here on the top right hand side of the map. Meanwhile, we have um, Ottoman, I believe, is the Blue Orc player on the bottom left. Now, um, this was taken from WFC, not exactly sure the acronym, but um, I had so much fun casting the previous series where it was King of the Hill style that I decided to do it again. So hopefully you guys will enjoy it as I am going to be getting to the two minute mark here in just a moment. No surprise that we will be looking at a Demon Hunter versus a Blade Master in this matchup. Now, K-O-T-H or King of the Hill means that if you win, you keep playing. So um, if Ottoman wins here, he will keep on playing and he will be facing up against another Night Elf. If Lin Ju Jae wins, he will be facing up against another Orc. Um, I think these are more for like clan or class pride in terms of overall rankings as we're looking at the Blade Master and the Demon Hunter now making their rounds. All right, down over here. Where's that Blade Master? Blade Master quickly um, gets detonated here. Is going to go ahead and Wind Walk. Also had a Clarity Potion. Clarity Potion or Wind Walk or Clarity Potion and then Wind Walked and then picked up a Circlet of Nobility. This Blade Master looks like he wants to try and do some very, very heavy harassment. Blade Master now running around the corner here. What is he going to be doing? He's going to Is he going to buy a second Circlet? No, he does not. Um... Or is he going to buy Boots of Speed, perhaps? No. Yes, he buys a second circuit of Nobility, so he's already at plus four to all those stats. For a Blade Master, that pretty much makes him almost at level two, except for he cannot Critical Strike. All right, there goes the Blade Master. Going to go ahead and try to take down a Wisp. There goes one Wisp. Now going after more and more Wisp. And is he going to get another Wisp there? You can see that the Wisp are actually draining those Moonwells fairly quickly as the blade master is trying to look for easy easy targets all right let's go ahead take a look at what's going to go down here the blade master waiting there is another 40 hit strike there gonna get another kill there and so far the demon hunter has not been able to do very much of anything as the blade master is looking for easy shots there is a nice two shot kill there as the blade master once again wind walks and this was a strategy that the uh, that the orc player definitely definitely knew about he he pretty much knew hey i know that my opponent is going to be having these dancing wisp with two circlets of nobility it will pretty much be almost two hits per kill there wow very very low hit point unit there as the blade master and the demon hunter now going uh, blade to blade so to speak Blade Master is actually um, losing this fight right now. The Demon Hunter um, winning this fight. And also with the help of perhaps some... Um what is going on here? Is the Blade Master just going to continue this fight? I cannot believe that the Blade Master. Oh, the Demon Hunter gets the kill there, gets the experience. But I believe, but that may be all, all part of his plan. If you take a look back at the Stronghold base, there is an two Orc burrows, th or yeah, two Orc burrows, three Watchtowers, and now a Resurrecting Blade Master. This was part of his strategy to try and lock down the Demon Hunter. He knew that losing a level one blade master is really not that big of a deal as he did end up taking down a good number of wisp that is going to delay um delay the amount of lumber being harvested and it is going to delay the tech to tier two most likely as we now see an ancient of wonders going down blade master is out on the field perhaps going to pick up a clarity potion use it and now make its way out across the map once more bestiary no barracks now being placed down um, this is a very strange build where he got his barracks after he teched to Stronghold and he wasn't even going for Bestiary yet. Dust of Appearance has been picked up. Demon Hunter now sitting at level 2 with Boots of Speed and Staff of Teleportation will be able to head back home in a jiffy if push comes to shove. That Blade Master getting very, very close to his opponent's base now has plenty of mana 
and it looks like he is going to go after a very unsuspected archer. Archer taking a lot of damage here. Is it going to try and win or a shadow meld? I don't think... Oh, yes, it does try to shadow meld, but it's not going to really work. Chemical Rage now on the Goblin Alchemist. That Chemical Rage, you just pretty much wait it out. And that Chemical Rage means that that um, that the hero is not going to be attacking nearly as... Or not going to be attacking nearly as fast once that does come to an end. I do not remember the last time I actually saw a Goblin Alchemist here in a Night Elf versus Orc matchup. As the Blade Master now able to easily get away and heal up. Is the Demon Hunter going to get off a Mana Burn? Yes, he does. It is going to force a, ch a charge off on the... But it is going to force a charge on the healing salve again as the Blade Master now tries to run away once more. He may end up getting mana burned again. And if he constantly gets mana burned, he's not going to be able to heal the rest of the units here. So far, it doesn't look like Orc is really doing much. Let's take a look back into the base. We are at Tree of Ages. We are going into Ancient of Winds for Druids of the Talon. Chemical Rage over the Beastmaster as the tavern second tavern hero. As we're looking at uh, a bestiary, a double bestiary down over here on the bottom. No spirit walkers at all from a spirit lodge. All right, let's take a look at this. The Alchemist and the Demon Hunter sitting at level 1 and level 2, respectively. Meanwhile, the Blade Master and the Shadow Hunter are going to come in from the back here. And are they going to get in some easy kills? It looks like that may be the case. Going after an archer already. That archer, very low on hit points, gets taken down. Uh, meanwhile, breaking of the hex, the Demon Hunter gets a mana burn off onto the Shadow Hunter. And now it looks as though a second archer may get taken down there. There it goes. Shadow Hunter now very low on mana, extremely low on mana after another mana burn. But there is another hex down on another archer. Those archers are just falling left and right as the Blade Master gets to level 2 ever so barely. Gonna use that healing salve, perhaps a clarity potion as well. You can see the Shadow Hunter has done the same exact thing as we are now going into Troll Bat Riders. All right, it looks like, um, well, it looks like the Night Elf is gonna get trolled here in just a moment. Troll Bat Riders are extremely, extremely rare. And with the archers in play, I believe that the, the archers can focus down those troll bat riders rather easily. The problem, though, is that they don't have serious um, serious damage, and they can are they're always constantly going to be running from that blade master. Blade master now running back around here. You can see that low hit point archer down to 115 hit points will be able to retreat and recover. Alchemist and a blade master going a blade to blade, so to speak. And what is really surprising about this is that the Alchemist really doesn't have much armor. Meanwhile, the Blade Master himself has 1.2 armor, giving him a lot more effective hit points in that matchup. All right, let's take a look at what's happening here. Oh, Staff of Teleportation, that you should adjust. Oh, yes, hex him at the last moment. And it looks like the Demon Hunter is going to be forced to use a Scroll of Town Portal to survive. If the Blade Master had gotten off or started attacking first and then allowed the Shadow Hunter to come in with the Hex, I believe that poor, poor Demon Hunter would have fallen. Shadow Hunter still sitting at level 1. Blade Master now sitting at level 2, looking to do a little bit more creeping. Where is he going to be traveling to next? Perhaps the mercenary camp here? No, not hiring anything there. The Demon Hunter is back up already to full help with the help of those Moonwells, as we are in Artificial Nightfall. All right, Troll Bat Riders going after these units here. They are getting ensnared down, and it looks like it is going to get taken out pretty easily. Wand of Lightning Shield, you can see the Troll Bat Riders here. They do, in fact, deal siege damage, which is going to be very effective against Dryads. If we actually see a lot of Dryads, that would be work out very well. The Blade Master, however, is going to have a lot of work cut out for him to try and take out the rest of the units. All right, Gauntlets of Ogre Strength there. We can see that the units are now coming back. Demon Hunter and chemical rage this is one of those situations where you rarely rarely ever see it but um, it is known that the alchemist actually can attack air the alchemist can attack air um, as though it has an orb of fire or an orb or of what well, an orb of venom it adds a, a just a ranged melee attack and can actually deal a lot of damage to these bat riders bat riders now being forced to retreat here that is a lot of archers and druids of the talon as we are looking at now an expand or not an expansion, an Ancient of War coming into play here at what I will call the 10 o'clock inner expansion. 
All right, fortified armor. It looks as though we are looking at a duo hero only with troll bat riders. Are these trolls going to be able to get away with any sort of serious damage as they are now flying out across the field? Liquid fire could be very, very effective. We see a quick staff of preservation saving the alchemist here, and the alchemist should, in fact, be able to take down these troll bat riders very, very easily. Meanwhile, the blade master and the shadow hunter now making their way to the top right demon hunter nagasi which a bit out of position here as a wisp gonna get nope gonna get detonated and now you see the alchemist now just gonna chemical rage away all right here you go there is the attack now do we see liquid fire i don't know i don't believe so but that is still a serious bit of damage as the archer is now attempting to shoot down the troll bat rider troll bat rider down to 27 hit points it looks like it will fall but not before taking out the entangled gold mine. Meanwhile, back over here, you can see Staff of Teleportation. Goblin Alchemist is right there. And you can see towers are currently being constructed. Watchtower is being constructed. Goblin Alchemist attempting to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against a Shadow Hunter does do a lot of damage. And now there's a quick mana burn. Very nice and very important that he actually got... Um, the, the Hex after the Chemical Rage, as we now see level 2 on the Shadow Hunter. Shadow Hunter at level 2, you can see the Demon Hunter going to finish off one of those Watchtowers. Second one is going to get cancelled here, as the Blade Master now going after the units once more. Troll Bad Rider gets shot down out of the sky here, as we are now pretty much out of gold. I do not know why the Night Elf player has yet to re-entangle this gold mine. Does he not realize that he currently has no gold whatsoever? And with no gold, he cannot stand to stick around for very, very long. Back off to the north, you see peons and even a villager just standing around and doing absolutely nothing. Ancient of War is there acting as a bit of a scout, making sure that the Night Elf does not set up an expansion. And we are looking at the Goblin Alchemist already back out on the field. Demon Hunter and Naga Sea, which are now on the field as well. And we really haven't seen that many engagements at the 12 minute mark of this game. Even on Bright and Dark, this is very, very far behind in terms of level. And um, I would have expected us to be at level 3, if not level 4, on the primary heroes, and then level 2 or level 3, even on the secondary heroes. But we are not seeing a very heavy creep creeping game both sides oh what is this a troll bat riders now making their way over oh, can we see perhaps the hunter's hall getting taken out and i don't know as we now have the troll bat riders making their way back once more and oh weapons upgrades the steel ranged weapons now being researched to increase the the siege attack on these troll bat riders sieged range damage or steel oh, it's steel range weapons and siege range damage could in fact add up very very quickly as the blade master now looks to get to level three i believe the blade master will be just be a little bit shy here as the goblin alchemist and the naga sea witch are trying to creep this creep camp out as well this is not looking good um looking good for either of the players in terms of where they should be it feels like this entire opening was um just purposely opened up a different way because of the style of the game being played. We now see peons making their way over. Are we going to see a couple of watchtowers? Yes, we are. There is one. There is two. We could see a third one. Yes, right there. Three watchtowers being placed down quickly. And as long as the orc player is putting pressure on the night elf, he should be able to get that expansion up. All right, now making their way off to the north. No, making their way back down. The archers are heading straight for this... Um, Watchtower trio all gonna get canceled right there, but the Blade Master gets in some very easy shots now being forced to back off. All right, it looks as though, yes, one troll bat rider will get taken down, and now you see up oh, a cyclone being wasted on an illusion. A town is under siege. Illusion still wandering around here. You can see that the Goblin Alchemist going after that peon gonna go ahead and take it down meanwhile we see oh troll bat riders with liquid fire preventing repairing on this building this is actually gonna hurt a lot we are at 810 gold and there's not much that can be done the wisp are desperately trying to repair you see archers now um, attempting to focus fire down that is not working well at all as the blade master is engaging here goblin alchemist is now back 810 gold 
And by the time that base is rebuilt, it is going to end up costing about a thousand gold, um, adding even more if the gold mine um, stays unentangled. 9,700 gold right now compared to 8,200. And that gold discrepancy is just going to continue to grow as I don't believe um, Lin Zhu Jie is actually mining any gold whatsoever. All right, this expansion location has nothing. You see more watchtowers being placed down. And this is just looking like a solid, solid game coming in from, um, what, I believe it's Ottoman. Yeah, Ottoman just playing a very, very solid game right there. Meanwhile, you can see that the Blade Master is finally at level three. All the archers are now coming back. As we were looking at the Goblin Alchemist chasing after a couple of free units. This is never what you want to be seeing at this point in the game. Every bit of experience really counts here as the Demon Hunter going to finish off that peon. The problem though is that the Blade Master cannot take down anything inside the main base as there are simply too many units there. But that does mean that the hero party is rather light. Three heroes against I believe two... Yes, it is going to be the Lich and the Death Knight so far. Oh, sorry. Lich and the Death Knight. No, th there is um, Shadow Hunter and the Blade Master. Lich and the Death Knight. All right, it's getting very, very hot in here, and I'm mispronouncing and misremembering names of units. Alchemist now making their way over. You can see Troll Batrider going to go ahead and take out this Ancient of War. Ancient of War falls without a problem, and now we are pretty much down to one base that has yet to mine anything. Once this Ancient of War is gone, if the Troll Bat Riders play it smart, they can just constantly put pressure on these bases, kind of force the archers away, and then rush on in. Pretty much any building that is not directly next to that Tree of Life could have problems as we're looking at where exactly the units are coming in from. Troll Bat Riders now trying to engage, perhaps take down a Naga Sea Witch. There goes one hero. A chemical Rage off on the Goblin Alchemist, but the Goblin Alchemist is not going to make it either. Manor Burn onto the Shadow Hunter, but not going to be enough. There it goes, as the Troll Bat Riders are now going after um, the Demon Hunter. The Demon Hunter now in a bit of trouble. Is it going to be able to make it out? I don't think so. And with that, too much momentum has gone in favor of Ottoman. And with with Ottoman, yeah, and with Ottoman, I believe that is going to be the GG Orc player wins game number one. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed game one. Please stay tuned for game number two.